Hi everyone, this is Dr. Himanshu Agrawal from uh, Swinburne University of Technology. Um, currently, I am working with Swinburne as a visiting associate professor in the IoT lab. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Sandeep uh, Chavre for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, to speak on Industry 4.0. Um, I would like to to first provide my brief introduction. Um, I obtained my PhD from RMIT in 2010. After completion of my PhD, I uh, joined uh, Symbiosis. And um, I worked there for almost eight years. Only in 2019, I moved back from Symbiosis to Swinburne University of Technology as visiting associate professor. So uh, I'll try my best to, to speak on Industry 4.0 uh, by giving some, uh, some practical uh, use cases. And I hope that uh, you can have some 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 takeaway on industry 4.0 uh, based on this uh, uh, session. Okay, so uh, all right, so let's let's start and see what is industry 4.0. So I think for industry 4.0, we we have been hearing about industry 4.0 from from industry as well as from academia, and some of you must have. Uh, have at least uh, attempted on some some aspects of industry 4.0 by writing some research proposal or you must be thinking of doing that so industry 4.0 is uh, now a very very uh, trendy or very popular topic uh, both in academia and industry and um, it it really requires uh, you know um, a partnership uh, of industry and academia to to make this uh, thing happen Right now, if you if you first want to have a look on Industry 4.0, it is very important to 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 actually have see the the evolution of industry uh, revolutions, uh, starting from Industry 1.0, which was mainly based on uh, mechanization and steam and uh, water engine. Right, so we we have seen the the first industrial revolution that took place in uh, 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 let's say uh, late 18th century, right? Followed by Industry 2.0, which was again based on mass production and electricity. That was 19th century. Followed by Industry 3.0, that is the 20th century, when we saw uh, an automation through electronic and IT systems, and to what we see in 21st century as Industry 4.0, uh, which is now based on some uh, technologies such as uh, um, i mean iot ai right blockchains we will see how this industry 4.0 is now taking this industry automation to the next level okay now the key question when we talk about industry 4.0 or how the industry automation can be improved further using uh, some new set of technologies so uh, I would like to now throw this question in front of you that what are these key technologies that underpins the digital transformation of uh, manufacturing processes? So one thing is quite clear that in industry 4.0, we are trying to improve uh, basically the, the work aspects in industry uh, to the next level. For instance, you have, uh, you know, in any industry, various shifts and in each shift you have workers. And each worker has got some um, uh, efficiency level, right? So it, it becomes quite challenging, uh, you know, to to measure the the efficiency of worker, right? And to to apparently improve the productivity. So improving workers' efficiency or the productivity is one one of those challenges, right? Under uh, Industry 4.0, to improving uh, the machine downtown uh, downtime, right? So how to improve the machine downtime is another important challenges, right? Um, to another aspects such as like supply chain, right? So how to, to efficiently 
uh, manage the supply chain aspect and in the industrial processes. So my talk will try to cover uh, some of these uh, aspects uh, under industry 4.0, right? So you can see here how our Swinburne um, industry 4.0 team uh, defines this industry 4.0. What is industry 4.0? So industry 4.0 fundamentally changes the way in which businesses create and capture value. This shift is enabled by a set of technologies including autonomous robots, simulation technology, system integration, the internet of things, cybersecurity, cloud computing, um, additive manufacturing, augmented reality, uh, and big data. So I think we have seen that this industry 4.0 encompasses all these uh, technologies, right? So, which can help um, uh, various industry uh, processes to to improve in uh, in terms of how workers' efficiency can be improved, how machine downtime can be improved, right? Right? How we can support productive maintenance, to how we can improve the 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 supply chain. So, these are the the fundamental pillars as we have seen in this uh, previous slide that we have got big data analytics, right? cloud computing, cyber security, robotics, augmented reality, right? The Internet of Things um, as one of those uh, key technologies making this uh, dream of Industry 4.0 possible now. So let's, let's go one by one uh, uh, to understand these uh, pillars of Industry 4.0. Now, IoT... Uh, I'm not going to go in the details of IoT right now, but I think you will uh, understand when I'll present some case studies um, as how IoT can support as one of the key technologies or as one of the key pillars of Industry 4.0. Now, if you see on the right hand side, uh, what are these areas which we can consider under um, the, the manufacturing uh, plants or manufacturing industries, right? So you have things providing you know a kind of uh, the very uh, lowest layer where you have got sensors right sensors deployed at various locations in that manufacturing plant capturing data right to the people working in various shifts managing the entire process process right which is uh, basically is a part of uh, some production process right so you, you can see that you have things, people, process, and data. So of course, data is the most important part in all these four uh, components, if you see, right? So if you compare data, process, people, things, data uh, covers around 40%, followed by process, people, and things, right? So um, as we see, um, IoT, uh, you know, complementing, uh, you know the the industry 4.0 in terms of uh, improving uh, you know the, the work aspect of industry uh, iot plays an important role right so we will see through our case study and um, as predicted by cisco that by 2025 there would be more than 100 billion uh, devices uh, you know making this internet of uh, things right so most of these uh, smart devices or these objects are basically uh, coming from uh, industrial sensors. So the out of the revenue generated by this uh, IoT, uh, most of the revenue is actually coming from industrial IoT. Right. Another important pillar of uh, this uh, Industry 4.0, as we have seen in the flywheel of uh, IoT, uh, Industry 4.0, Augmented reality is another important uh, uh, technology. Now, if you if you look at this augmented reality, this is already existing since long, right? So we we had this virtual reality existing for quite some time. Now, as per the the recent survey conducted by uh, PwC, um, twenty eight percent industry players. Uh, are planning or they have planned to implement augmented reality solutions for their uh, industry 4.0 um, uh, uh, dream or to to make this industry 4.0 uh, adoption possible. Now, if you talk about augmented reality, 
uh, I think this augmented reality has uh, got you know uh, an acceleration because of uh, some developments on uh, uh, you know the augmented reality tools available, right? So we have like uh, Hololens. So Hololens with Microsoft Azure platform is quite widely used these days to to solve these. Uh, uh, problems, uh, maintenance problems, or the repairing problems in industry. Now, by wearing this uh, Hololens, uh, you know a, a technician in an industry can speak to you know an expert. So it is very important when you are trying to to fix some issue or to fix some problem uh, in industry uh, process. So to fix that problem, that hardware problem, you you have to have your hands free, right? So in case if you are having your laptop or your mobile device while solving such problem, uh, it would be pretty difficult, right? So by wearing this uh, Microsoft uh, HoloLens can make, make it quite comfortable. It makes your, uh, you know, maintenance task, uh, I mean, or the repairing task quite easy. So while you are repairing that, uh, uh, you know, uh, process or that part, you can speak to a trained worker, a trained technician, who can, uh, you know, guide you through that process, and that can make the, the replacement quite easy. So this is one of those advances which is now taking this, uh, you know, the maintenance or the the repairing part in uh, most of these uh, industrial processes quite uh, easy, right? So you can have the the 3D view of that uh, part, um, and then you can uh, make an accurate uh, replacement for that, right? So yes, maintenance has become now quite easy because of this uh, augmented reality. With the support of augmented reality, uh, this uh, maintenance can be done quite uh, efficiently in industrial environment. Cloud computing, as we all know about cloud computing, that Cloud is making you know uh, everyone's life quite easy, uh, especially when we talk about uh, you know uh, IT resources, right? So with cloud computing, industries or uh, the enterprises they don't need to own these resources, such as uh, processing or storage, right? So all they can do is they can just uh, use cloud computing platform and can uh, basically. Uh, make use of these uh, storage or processing uh, resources in a scalable and uh, responsive manner without having to uh, to make a huge investment in uh, such on-premise IT infrastructure. So yes, cloud computing is making that part quite easy that in enterprises or industries don't need to own such resources. Now you can see here, uh, the slide shows Microsoft Azure platform, right? So you have devices here, Right, um, the the devices here are actually uh, including all uh, IoT devices or uh, various sensors, right? Cameras, um, uh, some tactile sensors, uh, variable uh, sensors, right? To some of these sensors which we use for logistics, right? So you can use some beacon to to track uh, the logistics, right? to uh, device connectivity options, right? So you have, uh, for example, IoT hubs in case of Azure, then you have storage. So these are your uh, various uh, IT resources one can enjoy uh, using a cloud platform, right? So here I have included, you know, Microsoft Azure. I mean, we know like various platforms are available these days. You have Amazon, AWS, uh, you have Google uh, 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 cloud platform. Right. So various cloud platforms are now available, making this uh, you know uh, industry 4.0 again uh, easy because you can actually uh, use uh, huge processing and uh, lots of storage power using cloud. Autonomous systems is another important. Uh, uh, technology, if you have a broader look to the, the industry 4.0, uh, where you have these uh, systems in industry uh, connected properly, 
so it basically forms a world of connected uh, devices as you can see in this slide you have two robotic arms right doing a task and both these robotic arms are uh, performing this by having a, a collaborative or uh, you can say uh, communication um, through which they can perform this task in a collaborative manner so a uh, better example could be to to see here how the cars are uh, being manufactured right so in a car industry uh, car manufacturing industry if you have a look you can better understand uh, this world of connected uh, robotic arms or world of uh, these autonomous systems working together to uh, to make you know this car manufacturing possible cyber security uh, i think when we talk about the world of connected devices in industry 4.0 uh, on one side this is making really a fully connected digital world where you have the um, you know the collaboration of physical objects or sensors with the digital world uh, to make it as industry 4.0 so on one side you have this benefit of connected uh, i mean world of connected sensors connected devices but at the same time it actually creates a whole new attack surface or a cyber security challenge right so if you look at this uh, statement by deloitte the fourth industrial revolution brings with it a new operational risk for connected smart manufacturers and digital supply networks right that is cyber the interconnected nature of industry 4.0 driven operations and the pace of digital transformation mean that cyber attacks can have far more extensive effects than ever before and manufacturers and their supply networks may not be prepared for risk so this is one of the important aspects when we talk about industry 4.0 which is a cyber security challenge so a lot of research is uh, already uh, you know um, being conducted and there is an ongoing research on various cyber security challenges uh, under this uh, industry 4.0 umbrella big data analytics this is another uh, important pillar of uh, industry 4.0 and um, if you look at the data which so we are data fied i mean if you look at the data the massive amount of data we produce every day uh, apart from the industrial uh, uh, sensory data right so we have the data generated by twitter facebook right there are various uh, social uh, media uh, websites producing enormous amount of data um, in addition to that we have the data being generated by uh, various other uh, applications so apart from these uh, i mean applications generating massive amount of data we have the data being generated by industrial sensors so of course the talk is on industry 4.0 so our relevance is on the data being generated by industrial sensors so there is a huge potential here in terms of uh, you know data analytics why because if you see in this graph you can see here that the amount of data which is uh, generated here so this upper one shows the the generated data and you can see here that the data which is available for analysis so there is a huge gap right so despite having huge amount of data generated hardly 10% of the data is available for analysis 90% of the data is still untapped so this now leaves a huge potential for uh, uh, data analyst right to apply complex algorithms for uh, making uh, a better decision support system real time data analytics uh, may help manufacturing companies to save on maintenance to save on uh, the machine down downtime to improve the workers efficiency uh, apparently improving the productivity all right so if we now try to have a big picture of what industry 4.0 can offer for industry you can see here there are three major aspects right 
first you can improve the productivity uh, or the workers efficiency right so i'll i'll cover this uh, by discussing you know a case study in detail uh, which is basically is a work done by our swinburne team okay so i'll i'll take that case study in detail how to improve the workers productivity and efficiency using these variable sensors right so each of these workers can have a variable sensor and through the the data collected by these sensors we can uh, monitor the the data for a particular process right for a particular industrial process and we can improve the, the workers efficiency by monitoring each of these workers through the uh, the data we collect uh, by these uh, variable devices right another important uh, aspect of industrial process is um, how to to do the the predictive maintenance right so when you have uh, you know uh, an industrial process how you can do the predictive maintenance so that you know before any uh, you know disruption uh, occur we can actually uh, we can detect you know that problem well in advance so with the machine learning and ai algorithms now this is possible so as long as you have the the sensors providing you the data um, you have these machine learning algorithms which can make this possible right uh, at the same time you have another important uh, uh, aspect of this industry uh, is how to to improve the the supply chain aspect you have you know your inventory where you keep these uh, items right and so it is very important to to manage the the supply chain efficiently this this also i would like to cover using one uh, one example uh, of dairy industry so my overall objective through this session uh, was to to make you aware of what industry 4.0 can technically offer and how you can apply your skills to to address to some of these challenges through industry 4.0 i am pretty sure when i will discuss about one of the, the case studies in detail you will know exactly what industry 4.0 can offer and how you can um, actually apply your skills let's say if somebody is good in machine learning uh, another person is uh, looking forward to apply um, iot related skills in generating data uh, both of them can work together to solve a complex problem under industry 4.0 such as improving workers efficiency or improving predictive machine maintenance or improving the supply chain aspect for any particular industry so here i think this slide is uh, capturing uh, this this particular uh, benefit predictive machine maintenance okay so let's see here how this can be done right so if you think of predictive maintenance uh, basically it gives you an image of how i can predict if something goes wrong in the industrial process right if some component has got just uh, 20% life left right so this could be easily understood in terms of Uh, the predictive maintenance of car if car is a part of our connected world that is internet of things so if you think of car servicing as an example and if you are going for a long drive let's say 2000 or 3000 kilometers of drive and if you are worried about some aspect of the car right specifically let's say braking or if there is something wrong happening may probably may happen uh, related to engine right so if the brakes are 70% um, i mean have the brakes have only 25% life left you may be advised to visit the next service station to avoid any um, issue when you are going for a long drive by making this complete ecosystem smooth so you can have a very seamless experience of replacing your brakes at the next service station when your car is a part of this connected world right so this could be considered as 
as a predictive maintenance of brakes uh, before uh, something goes wrong with your brakes while you drive uh, for 3000 kilometers. Right? Now, this example is actually uh, given for an industry, right? So, where you are uh, developing, you know, a predictive maintenance uh, um, solution by monitoring machine health continuously, right? So, this can be done by uh, deploying our sensors to monitor the, the machine uh, health, um, right, to improve the productivity aspect. And this can eventually reduce the machine downtime. So, as I said, uh, the whole objective through Industry 4.0 is to, to deploy a set of these technologies such as augmented reality, uh, IoT, AI and machine learning, big data analytics, cloud computing, or blockchains to save the cost, right? So, of course, to have the, the set of these technologies, um, each industry has a plan to invest and the, the industry is equally worried about return on investment. So, I think that is a different uh, side to it. Of course, equally important, but yes, every industry has got this return on investment in mind, which is setting, you know, a big challenge. Um, to take a leadership or uh, to adopt Industry 4.0 at wider scale, right? So, predictive maintenance of any industrial plant is possible by monitoring that system continuously to reduce the machine downtime using uh, uh, the combined IoT and machine learning. So, you can see here that we use uh, a detailed um, I mean, data analysis of uh, the industrial process, you capture the data and then you uh, develop that predictive tool, right, by using machine learning. So, of course, machine learning along with um, IoT sensors together can, can address to this uh, challenge of uh, monitoring specific uh, processes or specific uh, manufacturing plants processes. And um, so there might be some some critical uh, uh, you know um, critical processes or critical uh, manufacturing uh, devices in, in the manufacturing processes. So those devices are quite critical for the continuous operation of that uh, plant. So health monitoring of those critical devices or those critical components in the plant is very important, right? To reduce the, the machine uh, downtime. Because each time when the machine breaks down, it really costs a lot to, to that industry. So, if we have the technology that can assist in terms of monitoring the health, monitoring that critical part in the, the, the manufacturing process, it can save a lot. So, um, again, um, you know, if you look at uh, various countries, Germany is is a leader in uh, adoption of industry 4.0 and 80% of uh, industrial uh, or the manufacturing processes are now making use of industry 4.0 which is resulting in more than 18% saving uh, across various industries right so expected uh, outcome you can say improve plant machine efficiency by more than 85% which is currently 65 so there is a huge potential um, in the near future to, to make a progress here in this direction to make a wider adoption of industry 4.0 for improved, um, uh, uh, I mean, you, for improved efficiency or for reducing the machine downtime. Now, this case study is based on um, of course, this is a solution uh, which our uh, Swinburne IoT lab team has proposed to a uh, meat uh, processing plant. So, this is one of the largest meat processing plants in Australia. And this case study is based on the, the IoT solution provided by our uh, IoT lab team in Swinburne University of Technology in 2018. Right. So, they uh, provided a solution by studying you know uh, this uh, uh, workers efficiency problem right so and they 
identified opportunities for introducing industrial IoT solution to meat processing plants, a consultative approach in identifying opportunities, and they identify one major industry opportunity and develop a trial-based solution uh, for this meat processing plant. So you can have a look to how meat processing plant operates, right? So you have basically here uh, a raw meat, right? A raw meat which comes uh, from one side of this conveyor belt, right? And then you have these uh, workers, right, sitting on the workbench, having knife. So each worker has a knife, right? And each worker is responsible for cutting these, uh, I mean, this uh, raw meat into uh, pieces. And this is called as a processed product, right? which is then uh, goes as a product uh, for delivery, right? So the input is a raw meat and the workers are here having a knife and cutting the, uh, it into uh, proper meat pieces as a processed product. That's how you have this, uh, you know, uh, a meat processing plant where each worker works at a workstation, right? And then use a knife to, to cut it into a proper product. So, of course, we are now providing a, I mean, a solution here, an IoT solution through our uh, IoT lab team. I mean, they, they have already studied and this project is still uh, under process, right? So, yeah, this is a good case study under industry 4.0 and you can understand how we can deploy sensors and collect the data and apply machine learning to eventually improve the workers efficiency and productivity of this meat processing plant, right? So the solution is IoT solution for real-time fine-grained key performance uh, indicator as workers efficiency here for uh, KPI monitoring, right? So real-time fine-grained KPI monitoring solution to support decision-making and in turn deliver productivity improvements and reduction in cost. So what the team did uh, as a solution is they provided an IoT solution for real-time identification of plant workers. Uh, uh, as we will see uh, that how they have uh, provided this real-time uh, data, right? So they monitored the, the workers' efficiency on real-time. So which is basically based on uh, moving the, the knife, right, for cutting the meat piece, right? So operator efficiency, uh, key performance indicator using knife movement, right? So they provided an IoT, industrial IoT solution for real-time computation of operator efficiency using knife movement. So this is a good, uh, good uh, case study. If you really want to understand uh, the use of IoT and machine learning, uh, which is one of those two key technologies uh, under Industry 4.0. And of course, we have seen many other technologies like augmented reality, which is uh, catering to the repairing and the maintenance aspect of the industrial processes, right? Here we are uh, making use of variable sensors to monitor uh, the workers' efficiency and to provide uh, industrial IoT solution, right? So you can see here there are three workers, right? Each of them is having a variable sensor, right? Uh, which is used to so they are they are provided not one they are provided basically two wrist bands, two variable uh, bands, one on each hand, right? Because when you are cutting a meat um, a piece, you are basically making use of both hands, one for uh, grabbing it, another one for cutting it, right? So there is definitely is an involvement of both hands when you do this task, right? So there are two bands um, on both hands provided to each of these workers. So the data from both left and right hand uh, is then collected through the, the Raspberry Pi, which is acting as a gateway here, right? And then using this Wi-Fi communication protocol, uh, wireless communication protocol, the, the data is then uh, collected here at the 
server, right? So this is how this uh, setup is uh, being made uh, for this meat processing plant. And uh, what is this setup doing is actually then using sensors here inside this um, wristband. It is making use of uh, uh, two sensors, accelerometer and gyroscope, right? Inertial sensors, right? So the worker activity is basically uh, when it, uh, the worker is productive, having movement, worker is idle, waiting for the meat piece, right? Aligning. So these are some of the major activities and we can see how when we capture this uh, real-time uh, worker's knife movement data, how we capture various activities, how we annotate those activities as far as machine learning is concerned. So you can see here, there are two parts. One is collection of data, right? So this is something which is um, important to a data engineer, right? So using IoT sensors or IoT devices, uh, one can collect the data, which is important to a data engineer. And once the data is collected, then we have uh, uh, the data analyst or uh, engineers working on uh, data analysis using machine learning. So that is a part of data analysis. So there are two major roles here. One is uh, uh, a data engineer's role, collecting data. And uh, the second role is data analyst role, where you have to, to work on this data to get the value out of it, right? So, in plant trial here for the real time computation of operator efficiency KPI, key performance indicator, you can see is based on, um, you know, having the, the sensors here. You can see here, there is one band here, another band here, right? So, when you are cutting a meat, raw meat, you can see that both hands are involved, right? And in addition to this, there are a few more sensors deployed, right? to sense uh, the worker, I mean, uh, who the worker is, right, during the shift, right? So there are a few more sensors in addition to, to the, uh, the wristbands. Wristband is mainly used for uh, monitoring the, the productivity aspect or to monitor the, the efficiency while worker is uh, cutting uh, the meat piece, right? So movement of knife is captured using these two uh, bands, making use of gyroscope and accelerometer as inertial sensors. Here yeah, you can see that there is a proximity uh, sensor being used, right? So estimote is uh, very popular when somebody is interested to, to make use of uh, the proximity sensors or to, to use these beckons. Um, you check for estimote, right? Then you have the, the Raspberry Pi, right? So Raspberry Pi is uh, used as a gateway. And then this is the wristband, which is used for detecting the, the motion while cutting the meat, right? So Raspberry Pi is used uh, for data. Uh, I mean, this is used as an edge device or the gateway device, right? Uh, proximity sensor is used for workers identification and the associated worker to a workstation for data collection. And then you have the metaware sensor, they are calling it as metaware, which is a wristband, which is used for movement of knife. Now in the trial design, uh, how they, uh, you know, did this trial, they collected data from four workers in a period of two working days. Um, so, and four, eight hours shifts. So they collected data from four workers uh, in a period of two working days and uh, for um, four eight-hour shifts, right? So they collected uh, real production data from these plant workers equipped with, uh, as I have shown in the previous slide, uh, these uh, two metawares or two wristbands making use of accelerometer and uh, gyroscope sensors, right? Okay, so it, the data was collected by, uh, you know, uh, these two bands uh, in, in four shifts for four workers in two days. And this data was then uh, collected in the normal production shifts. So what are the key findings? Um, 
these key findings are quite interesting because if you have seen that it is not at all obstructing or uh, making any kind of reluctance to the acceptance of these sensors as far as uh, the industry is concerned because it is a risk band is not creating any any impact on the plant operation uh, or any impact on the safety and health right or not creating any interference to the workers activity or to the loss of productivity right so yes the these are one of those key aspects of uh, this trial that it, it is not at all um, uh, you know proving as a hurdle to the normal productivity or to the normal activity of uh, this uh, meat cutting uh, process right so the interesting part of this trial solution uh, industrial iot trial solution is to 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 do this machine learning uh, for this meat processing right so you can see here there are uh, six activities uh, which we can list here wait for the next available meat that is idle collecting meat from the conveyor belt removing fat from the meat that's how i mean when you uh, look at uh, a raw meat you have to remove the fat from the meat cutting large chunk of chunks of meat to suitable delivery ready pieces and return meat to the conveyor belt after processing uh, and knife sharpening that is also one of those activities right so these activities are annotated in the, the data set <clears throat> when the data was collected you can see here waiting for the meat is labeled as idle uh, knife sharpening is annotated with this label one right then you have slicing as two cutting as three right so four five six so you can see there are total seven activities um, uh, you know under uh, this uh, meat processing plant um, so by capturing the data from these four workers uh, the data is annotated uh, as i mean uh, with seven levels And if you want to now have a better look as how this data looks like, if you see here, a, uh, the data looks like as um, a variation, right? So you can see that we are using accelerometer uh, data uh, and uh, gyroscope data. These are the sensors which uh, one can use for uh, capturing movement, right? So these sensors can be used for other uh, purposes as well right so another important area where we use these inertial sensors or motion sensors is for activity recognition so this is a kind of activity recognition of workers right so activity recognition of old age people in old age home so this is one of those important uh, uh, challenges where an old age person is being monitored um, uh, for assistive ambient assisted living because an old age person in uh, developed nations is living alone right and is assisted by either a, a caretaker um, you know once a week during weekend or medical staff uh, every fortnight right so when a person is living independent it is very important to to have some assistive technology right so if something goes wrong it can be detected as an anomaly so visual representation of the data from these uh, um, metaware or from the the variable sensor uh, right the data which is collected from these workers in the form of these two wristbands right so here you can see that accelerometer data provide the acceleration when you use you know uh, a knife for cutting so you can see that slicing and cutting has got the uh, the most of the variation as well as pulling, right? So when you are pulling the fat, removing the fat, right? So you can see slicing, cutting, pulling, um, uh, even grabbing has got uh, uh, most of the movement. Slicing has got the largest, right? Whereas when you are just waiting for the meat piece or in the idle state, there is a, a least amount of variation in the accelerometer data, right? So all these activities which I have shown in the previous slide are uh, marked here when you see the, the data. 
right now we come to this machine learning aspect right so those who are uh, having machine learning skills they can better relate to their uh, skills here um, based on the data here right so you can see that there are various windows and in each window you are actually now having a, a descriptor or, um, or a definition of that activity right based on the, the data so we have 43 features from the acceleration, uh, acceleration and 32 features from the, the gyroscope data um, from for, for each hand, right? So you have got 43 features from acceleration and 32 from uh, gyroscope. The acceler accelerometer uh, is actually providing you the acceleration and gyroscope provides the, the angular uh, motion. So when you, when you twist your uh, wrist, right? So that movement of uh, that angular movement of wrist is captured by gyroscope. So, in a way, when you grab, there is an angular movement. While pulling, you have some angular movement. While cutting, you have accelerometer, which can help. So, of course, you need to, to provide the data using both the sensors because there is a bit of angular movement and there is uh, basically uh, a movement in terms of cutting knife, which can be captured by. Accelerometer. So both the sensors are here, um, you know, equally important to capture the movement or to capture the activity as meat cutting, right? And then you have the features as mean, standard deviations, number of peaks, magnitude, roll, pitch. One can easily um, apply uh, statistical machine learning on uh, this data. So total 156 features collected from both ends, right? So support vector machine here is used um, uh, as a model, right, to perform the machine learning, right. So you can see here that um, this uh, support vector machine algorithm is used. Uh, so we various models are used here, uh, individualized uh, SVM model using features only from corresponding workers, right. Uh, generalized SVM model, randomly combining data from multiple workers, simple model, classes are labeled in three categories, just um, level 0 to 2, which is idle, sharpening and working. That means cutting is here uh, taken as working, right? Detailed model where all seven classes are used, which you have seen uh, when I was showing that data annotation for seven activities labeled as 0 to 6. Right. Now, different models are generated using different subset of features. All features from both hands, all 156 features, or all features only from one hand, 78 features, only acceleration related features from both hands, that is 43 times 2, 86 features, only acceleration related features from one hand, 43 features. Right. So mostly right hand is used for, uh, you know, uh, mainly used for activities. So two third data is used for training and the rest for validation. So yeah, we can use that uh, standard uh, uh, rule of uh, training and uh, I mean how to split, right, the data for machine learning. So this now uh, slide shows uh, when you have features from both hands uh, using both accelerometer and gyroscope that is 156 features for various workers you can see w1 w2 w3 w4 these are the four workers and this is the the detailed model using seven activities and the right side shows uh, a model using only three activities right so accuracy in percentage for a detailed model and the model which is using only uh, three activity classes right so you can see when the data is collected from both ends for all for four uh, workers, the, the workers efficiency is around 70. So somewhere between 62 to 70 and the combined efficiency is 65%. Now for the same 156 features, you can see the accuracy for three activity, not that detailed model, only using three activity, the efficiency is close to 90%. Right. So the same is the case when you have only the accelerometer data from both hands, 
and each accelerometer is giving you 43 features. So the data from both ends uh, is actually based on 86 features is having around 68% accuracy for this detailed model using seven activity classes. Uh, compared to this, again, the efficiency, combined efficiency, uh, combining all uh, workers efficiency, if you see, is close to, uh, I mean, the data, if you combine all workers, the, the efficiency is around 90. Separately, if you see, the efficiency is quite better. 93% accuracy for worker 1, 92 again close to 93 for worker 2, 91% accuracy for worker 3, and again similarly close to 91% for worker 4, right? So the efficiency for the other two cases when you collect the data only from right hand is also is not bad if you see the efficiency is around 89%, right? So yes, if you see that the data corresponding to the accelerometer uh, uh, sensor um, having only, I mean, only 86 features of the accelerometer is giving you the, the best results. So yeah, this is one of the, the examples of industry 4.0, which you can see can be easily used by, with the help of these IoT sensors uh, and machine learning algorithm to to monitor workers efficiency here uh, and this can be provided as a solution right so one more case study i will cover here uh, as how you can improve the the milk quality supply chain for a dairy industry this is another important uh, project uh, in the iot lab uh, swinburne university of technology under crcp project uh, which has got a $1 million uh, funding. So it's a funded project on how to improve this uh, milk quality uh, supply chain using um, um, IIoT solution, right? Dairy industry here in Australia is a huge industry, um, a $9 billion industry. Um, so getting a proper price uh, to a farmer or providing you know, a price for the premium product is very important. So this is possible by setting, you know, a proper supply chain from farm to the supermarket. And um, this can definitely not only classify, uh, you know, the milk quality properly, but can actually eventually result in providing uh, a, a value for the premium uh, dairy product. Okay. So... How is this possible? This is again possible by using industry 4.0 uh, key technologies such as IoT, right? So by deploying IoT sensors in the farm field, uh, by using cloud platform and by using machine learning, uh, together they can, you know, address to this uh, industry 4.0 uh, problem such as how to improve the, the milk quality supply chain for providing uh, value for the premium product, dairy product in this dairy industry. All right. So to summarize, industry 4.0 adoption is, I mean, we can see the growth, but the, the real growth has yet to come. And I mean, of course, there are several challenges. So few important challenges, if you want to see, uh, is data ownership issues. Now, when we discussed about the data you collect from the, the sensors and if you use a cloud platform, right, and if you make use of third party vendors, then it creates some issues on part of data ownership, right? Uh, so on one side, using cloud computing for making use of, uh, you know, um, IT resources uh, makes the 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 task of industry quite easy in terms of uploading huge amount of uh, data from various sensors on the cloud platform but at the same time it may uh, pose some challenges on data ownership right lack of in-house skills for the deployment of industry 4.0 initiatives so a lot more um, need to be done in terms of uh, upskilling you know uh, uh, the staff in industry to have a wider adoption of industry 
uh, solutions. Uh, another important challenge is the data integration from various uh, uh, sources. So you have the data from various uh, sources, various uh, sensor devices in industrial environment, and the data could be of uh, different types, right? So you could have a video data from a video sensor to a numerical data from uh, uh, a simple temperature and humidity sensor. So integration of data for a decision support system in the industry 4.0 environment or in the smart factory environment is quite challenging, right? So a lot of research work is already going on uh, on uh, how to, to make best use of uh, uh, the, the sensor fusion for uh, the decision support system uh, under industry 4.0, right? Similarly, uh, another important challenge is lack of proper uh, digitization plan, right? So under industry 4.0, definitely we are looking forward to, to, to provide this merging of uh, physical world with the, the digital solutions, right? So it requires a proper plan, proper uh, uh, unified approach to have uh, a wide scale adoption of industry 4.0. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this uh, session on industry 4.0. I cannot cover it in detail in this uh, 45 minutes to one hour session. Uh, rather, I just thought of you know covering one particular use case which you can go through and understand how you can apply some of these uh, key technologies to address industry 4.0 uh, uh, problems. So thank you so much. If you have any question, you can simply uh, uh, contact uh, me through uh, Dr. Sandeep. My email address is uh, uh, h-a-g-r-a-w-a-l at swin.edu.au to, to collaborate with me or to talk to me um, about uh, IoT solutions in future. Thank you so much.